My name's Stuart Griffiths. You know, went to Sutton Coalfield in Birmingham, past the, uh, the, the Paris selection. My platoon sergeant was, was mentioning dispatches on Mount London. It really seemed like a scrap. I was picked to be in the Bayonet, Bayonet practice team to perform in front of Gorbachev and Margaret Thatcher. Stuart, how are you, brother? I'm OK. I'm OK, Chris. Just Good. surviving, cracking on. Yes, yeah. as, as we do. Uh, we're going into this one hot, friends, at home. Um, Stuart's very kindly agreed to come on the podcast. Uh, it, I, I can't remember who put me in touch with Stuart, but one of you very kindly suggested to get this gentleman on my show. And when I watched a, a, a podcast that Stuart did, it was like listening to myself. Um, and we've had a similar lifestyle, both being homeless, um, both being in Op Banner, um, both being veterans who... Um, push for peace although Stuart might correct me on that and say <laughs> no um but uh yes mate let's just go go for it um should we start right at the beginning because I'm always fascinated with childhood stories we hear a lot about PTSD and people seem to think it's something you get on the battlefield and I often try to point people out no most soldiers are pretty shitty childhoods and the 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 resettlement when you come out of the forces having been looked after for all this time is quite a shock to deal with, especially when all that trauma comes back and you've never had to really get to deal with it. So what 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 was your younger years like, mate? I had a great childhood. I lived yeah. in, um, I was brought up in a, in, in a place called Altrincham in South Manchester. Uh, uh, Neighbours I had, which was Bob Greaves from Granada Reports, lived down the road because I had a paper round when I was about 11. Um, over the, the wall where I lived was the lead singer of the, of the, of the soft prog rock band, no, not, not prog rock, but Sad Cafe. Um, mm. And it was kind of a, a really great kind of, you know, a lot of the Manchester influence and all that. So if you like, a lot of the... Um, the musicians that did well uh, would move kind of to like uh, neighbouring Hale and, and Bowden and all that. So my childhood was was great. I mean, uh, and then we moved to Warrington and and then it wasn't so great because it was a new town and it was it was a kind of um, overspill area for uh, for Mancunians and, and Scousers. And uh, I was age 13. I was at that kind of age where I mean I was at the time I think I was I was into the mod fashion so um, I, I used to go to Manchester uh, on a Saturday morning and we'd hang out at the uh, the cave um, shop which is an alternative uh, a, a fashion shop we got to Affleck's Palace and then, and then we go to this club which was basically to get all the mods off the street because we were just lingering outside this shop uh, into a place called Cloud Nine um, and that, that was great and uh, yeah you know and um, I think what was, you know, it's a real difficult age anyway, especially if you're moving from somewhere like Altrincham, if you like, which was, you know, it was, I mean, a lot of people say it, it's it's quite a well-to-do posh area. I mean, maybe it was, but that was my, that, I kind of grew up in, 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 in that environment. Um, and, um, you know, I could go into detail about many things, but off the offset, it was okay. And, uh, and then I joined the Army Cadets when I, I lived in Warrington, age 15, and um, that kind of gave me a sort of sense of direction. I mean, funny enough, really, I mean, I was always good at art at school, um, drawing, cartooning, and that was my kind of thing. Um, so as a, as, a, as a young kid, I mean, I, you know, I, I growing up, there's pictures of me when I was three years old with my action man toy, uh, you know, in his Red Devils outfit and stuff like that. And my mother had a big family network, you know, many you know, family of like nine so I felt safe, you know, and, and, and all that. But um, as, as growing up, you know, it was either art school or the army, funny enough. And I know the, the two completely polar opposites. And um, 
And when I joined the Army Cadets, that was, uh, it, you know, because obviously you don't want to be playing with your action man when you're like 15. It's a bit bit childish. So, uh, so still, I, I joined, st- still throwing them out the bedroom window with yeah, a well, Tesco carrier bag. Well, well, my paratrooper action man, Red Devil's out, outfit, someone down the road actually tried to activate the parachute. And I think it hung on the electricity wires for... It, it hung there that long. Um, we just kind of forgot about it. But uh, what... Um, what kind of uh, the, the the actual? Um, sorry, I'm just intermittent from 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 work. I'm I'm, I'm doing this call from from where I work, a, a veteran charity. Um, but uh, yeah, joining the army can gave me a sense of uh, direction, if you like, and uh, and I really embraced that. But uh, even when I was an army cadet, I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to join the parachute regiment, and um, and that was really stemmed from when I was a paper boy. Uh, delivering newspapers and I was 10 years old which was quite young for two to have a paper round but I managed to get one off this guy who was giving it up he was like looked like um, uh, the guy lead singer from uh, from Echo and the Bunnymen um, McCulloch um, uh, and um, so yeah the the, uh, the Falklands War if you like was, was 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 the thing and seeing the pictures the black and white pictures from Mount Longdon uh, taken by Tom Smith of the Daily Express, and also the television program, The Paras, as well. Um, I'd, I'd watched that, and, and I remember this this really unusual. Um, uh, I, I thought it was a documentary, but it was actually a film. But it was AFN Clark's Contact, and it, I remember think is this is this real or is this a film? Is it? But it, it was it was all about Northern Ireland and, and, and Armagh and stuff. But I was just really fascinated by all that and I think maybe it was because of this action man I had when I was three years old in his Red Devils outfit and you know watching a parachute display in, in Withinshaw Park um, around that same age and so that was my kind of, of journey and I was kind of told at school anyway and I was seen as a bit of a school failure really because uh, you know I was, I was told you, I'd never have the qualifications to get into art school and Again, moving from the age of 13 and stuff and into a place like Warrington, you know, and yes, school got violent. You know, uh, we had the Grange Hill thing, you know, Zamo and, and uh, you know, smacked out of his head. You know, they were doing, kids were doing like heroin and chasing the dragon. And it was, it was all kind of part, part of the norm. And, uh, and more of these things were happening, the more I thought joining the, the parachute regiment would be a great place. To, to 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 be to be part of to uh, um, I won't say I had much military connections in my family. Um, my my father he was a butcher by trade. Um, my grandfather he was based at Ringway Airport during the Second World War um, with with the RAF. Um, but that's about it, really. Um, you know, because even when I look at my, my my real you know my real father's. Uh, family background it's all you know travelers you know romany gypsies french jewish you know all sorts of stuff in the mix you know and uh, and here i was trying to find myself in in, in the world and, and what was i going to what was i going to do with it and for me para reg was 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 the thing and and i have to admit you know i mean it, it wasn't easy but uh, i remember going to sutton coalfield doing the selection thing and, and getting my calling up papers to join in platoon junior parachute company and i thought th- i thought this is brilliant you know this was this was really you know i felt really that I was part of something and something that was um, you know something proper um and then obviously you know uh, you do your p company selection and uh, you know I, I don't mind admitting you know i i i, I first time 17 i had a little bit psychologically whoa this is like immense because what happens with the p company selection is that you know you get this whole new training staff group coming the p company staff with the blue zippers and the the big mustachios and it's the psychological thing you just think oh my i mean they're just the way they're like androids from outer space and um so i did it on my third attempt but that's how dedicated i was to uh, to um to be part of this 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 you know, airborne brotherhood thing. And, uh, and you know, uh, like you say, PTSD, things like that. I mean, r- r- I mean, I know, you know, a lot of the lads I, I serve with, you know, come from broken homes and things like that. But um, for me, um, 
the trauma was Northern Ireland and it was just the kind of ferocity of that, the, uh, the intensity of the hatred. I don't think I've ever quite uh, felt that, 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 that I've never experienced anything like that in my life. And, um, and it, it, it was so thick. It was, it was like kind of suffocating. Um, so, so yeah, so that's, I mean, if we want to talk trauma and stuff, mine, mine stem from, mm. from them Northern Ireland tours. Um, let's let's go back a bit, mate. First off, can I just say you look remarkably young for your age, Stuart? Yeah, have, yeah. Have, have you your your paper round must have been piss easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't know. You had, had a few paper rounds. That's had the, the weekly paper as well, and uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I've always been one to keep active. I mean, even where I work now, um, I walk to work. I do a lot of. Um, you know, in, in terms of my photography as well, I, um, although I, I don't really work in a professional capacity, I'm still taking photographs. I've sort of, I've, I've got myself a big Mamiya, uh, this Mamiya Universal Press camera, which Don McCullen uses. Uh, he's like a famous photographer, did a lot of conflicts sort of around the 60s and 70s, Vietnam and all that. But he, he used this camera to do his, his moody landscape. So I got one. Um, over over lockdown to kind of really slow the process down so doing that getting out and about is is you know really the key yeah yeah i mean i'm doing all right i've not got loads of gray hairs considering <laughs> you've still got air mate well done and um let's just give the paras documentary a mention because it was a classic wasn't it oh it's brilliant brilliant but the thing is when i joined free para you know, um, I mean, I joined, I joined B Company, and, and the B Company Sergeant Major was 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 the Sergeant Riley. He was nicknamed Mavis Riley. Um, you know, in my time, and then there was the the Fleming guy, and there was the Cunningham one, the one you know, the one who who was like, oh, but he, he was he was finding it difficult to get around certain things, but he had that you know, he had that kind of spirit. But he was still it. So it was quite it was quite interesting seeing these characters from that television show. In real time, you know, and uh, but yeah, I, I thought that br- program was was brilliant. In fact, I even got in touch with Frank Hilton, who uh, who wrote the uh, the program or director of us, and I said, you know, your your program inspired me to join the Parachute Regiment, and he went, oh dear, I, what have I done? You know, <laughs> it was like he had the opposite kind of uh, reaction, which I, I thought was quite interesting. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, it was. It, it served a purpose of that time, and uh, it, you know, obviously, when I was at Depot, it was a, a, a little bit more brutal because there wasn't TV cameras there. But uh, yeah, that all, all that that stuff from apart from the fact we used SA80s instead of SLRs, and we didn't have uh, putties. We had you know DMS high. Um, it was all exactly the same. Yeah. What what year, what year were you born, and what year did you join up? Well, I, I was born in seventy two, um, and I joined in eighty eight. Ah, same yeah. as me, but you were two years younger than me. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So I just had I just had my fiftieth birthday. Yes. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. <laughs> hey, life starts at fifty, mate. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I truly believe. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. I'm fit and well i'm not fit at the moment i'm waiting for a spine operation i bust bust a disc but ordinarily i'm like i've never been fitter in my life and stronger than i am now which is just insane but um i remember the paris there was a a, a, i think he was a black brummy lad and after the after the balloon, i think his name is what yeah yeah after the balloon jump which i've now done a couple of times um which is just, I love goals in life. I love seeing someone on the telly and thinking, I'm going to do that one day. And then when it comes real, I just, it's what I love about my life is all those moments. But yeah, they, they interviewed him out. The, the, the interviewer said, so how were you feeling when you were in the balloon cage? You went, I was absolutely crapping myself. <laughs> Me and my cousin had it on his VHS video. We just kept, 
we just kept rewind. We, oh, we, sussed, bit, yeah. we sussed it so we could just rewind. It was, I was absolutely crapping myself. I was absolutely <laughs> crapping myself. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It, it, it is an unusual experience. It's, they just say, look at the little bits of uh, material hanging from the nose of the balloon. And you just hear this squeaky cage and you're thinking, God, what am I doing? But, you know, you can't, you can't let yourself down. You can't let what you're doing, you know, the, the whole, you know, it's like everything rests upon this, you know, thing of just stepping over the edge. Mm. And, uh, yeah, it, it was, it was, it, it, it was, it was good. Um, you know, I, I, there's been some sort of blips in my life and all that, but you know, that my informative years were take, taken, um, used up, you know, by, by the parachute regiment and, um, and when I look at where I am now, and the fact of you know I've got, I've got a wonderful wife, I've got I've got two amazing, uh, you know, kids, they're not children, they're teenagers now. Uh, they won't, they're not they're not ever going to join the military. They just they've got other things more into the kind of filmmaking and music and all that because you know things that I've always been interested in. But uh, it it laid some really good foundations in in, in that sense. Mm. Um, it's, uh, I mean, I even talk about the fact when I first joined uh, JPC and the first four weeks when we were basically confined to camp, it was actually really great, <laughs> you know, because, you know, you weren't going downtown, uh, you know, and get, you know, because the whole thing, and this is, you know, which was part of the culture, especially part of the culture at that time was the, you know, the alcohol and all that sort of stuff. And, uh, and you weren't allowed to do any of that. And, uh, and again, sort of reflecting on that kind of thing, going downtown and blowing all your wages. Uh, when I, uh, the, the unit photographer of, 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 or the battalion photographer, I, I, I was interested in cameras and I, I you know, and, and so we, when he, uh, he started to teach me about the dark room, which was fantastic for me because it stopped me going downtown. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, you know, it's... I mean, it, luckily, when you're in the military, you know, the, the next morning, you know, the PTI gets you up and you're going to go for a 10 miler. Um, but this is where, you know, when you haven't got that kind of infrastructure uh, and, and you're in the civ civilian world and, you know, the, the bars are there, you know, and, and all that, but you haven't got the PTI there. So, you know, it's a bit like uh, w w where I work, you know, one guy said, well, you know, it's like he'd really want to be confined to some kind of like institution where he was had to garden or do this, and he wasn't lured by off licenses. Do you know what I mean? It's uh, it, it's 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 a bit like a bit like the internet, isn't it? We've we've got so much information out there. Um, it, it you know people just start spinning out. Do you know what I mean? And uh, it, it's so yeah, I think. What I've learned, especially nowadays, is just to is, and it's like with the photography I'm doing, is it's just slowing slowing things down. You know, um, I mean, I must get. I, I, we've got these people, uh, all these roadworks going on, trying to get all these internet fiber optics everywhere. I'm thinking, do we really need that? Do you know what I mean? It's it's you know what we should be doing is, is slowing down. I mean, my wife's um, she's an environmentalist and stuff, so I think I think it's rubbing off on me. <laughs> And we should um, give the paras a mention, well, especially three para down, well, all, 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 all the men in the Falklands, but Longdon, from what I've read, I've also, also had the pleasure of having Jimmy James O'Connell on the podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah Jimmy, yeah. Um, that seemed like the most brutal. Oh, yeah. Brutal battle out of the, out, uh, friends at home, you're welcome to correct me in the comments and apologies, I mean, no offence, but it really seemed like a scrap. Whereas in some of the other um, battles, I think uh, there was l l less less casualties because the Argentines seemed to run away, get, got to a certain point, and then they just fled. Yeah. But again, I'm 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 only going on what I'm trying to make sense. Yeah, of it, yeah. But, but Longden, and when they talked about the treasure hunting at the end, that was like a it was a real big thing to go around and basically rob the <laughs> rob the Argentines of anything they, that they could uh, find for souvenirs and um, rations. I'm guessing and the rest of it. Yeah, well, I was talking to someone because I'm, I'm I'm brand secretary of the local 
Para Edge Association here in, in, in Hastings and I was talking to a, a, a veteran of Mount Longdon and, you know, the result, I mean, if anyone's, you know, read anything, they would have come across the Green Eyed Boys book, uh, which is, it's a, it's a fascinating read. I think Hel- Helen Parr's Our Boys is equally good and, and if, if not better, um, a bit more of a, of a, of a newer, um, and I, I know Helen and I think she's a great person and her brother, was killed on on uh, on um, Wireless Ridge. He was two para, but um, he was saying you know, the old Stuart McLaughlin and the uh, the Argentine ears. You go well. How do you have any time to do that? Because it was literally, you know, attacking a jagged mountain and with bayonets fixed. Do you know what I mean? And the, the mayhem and the chaos and and you know the and it. You know, I, I can't stop. I wasn't there, but from what I, I have learned from from the guys who were there, it, it was just, just yeah, it was it was the kind of uh, a real ultimate baptism of fire, and you know the pairs fire manoeuvre, the whole the the insanity of where it was just chaos and let's get a brew going, which and I get all that. You know, mm. it's it's like a kind of moment of a uh, of ins- uh, you know. It, it, well, yeah, insanity. And the, I watched a documentary recently on Channel 4 about the Falklands. They're saying, oh, it, 10 minutes and we could have lost the war. But that's war. Every second counts. Every, you know, minute. Things can change just like that. You know, I, I mean, I never experienced, you know, that kind of war thing. But in Northern Ireland, things would just go boom. Do you know what I mean? And just change, you know. And it was unbelievable just how, you know, things just got out of hand. And you think, how, how did that happen? How did, how, how did, how did this escalate to this, this immensity, you know? Um, but, yeah, I've got a lot of time for, 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 for that. And like I say, you know, it was them photographs that really was um, the inspiration. And it, it's, But then, you know, that's how you get, you know, youngsters to go and do things. It's like... It, it, there was no glory in that. It's a bit like when I spoke to uh, a very famous Magnum photographer, Philip Jones Griffiths, who uh, photographed uh, Vietnam and he did a book, Vietnam Inc. Very famous uh, book. Uh, it's probably one of the milestones in photojournalism. And I said to him, I said, well, you know, what you're doing is painting a real negative picture about the American effort. He said, how, how did the Americans, you know, how did, how, you know, how did they react? He said, well, they said nothing. But at the same time, Seeing them, it, them images of truth, it, it doesn't put you off from it. it it's, for me as a young person, it was like, you know, I knew it, it, would be, uh, it would be a heavy ordeal, but I was curious to sort of, to see, you know, why in, in my own sort of way, you know. Yeah. But yeah, that jagged mountain. I remember f- a photographing um, a, a Falklands veterans reunion where they went to the, um, to, the, to, the, to the graveyard in Aldershot. And I remember being so kind of like, I, I don't know, some really kind of, whoa, kind of hairs on the back of my neck. But seeing Jason Burt's gravestone and, 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 the, and, the, and the Jewish Star of David, I was just like, you know, and it was, it was just an am- amazing thing to see. The fact that you know that these, and he was only seventeen. That they, they, these people were, you know, they came from a lot of love, you know, a lot of, you know, and respect in the house to them, you know. And uh, I've got um, Jimmy's book, um, Three Days in June, the the original one <laughs> before mm. it was made into a, you know, because it, it, it got, he got a publishing deal, and it, it was just something incredibly fascinating and when it came to me doing my phd research which is on soldiers personal photographs you know it was like i was building up to this the abyss of war and the abyss of war i was building up to was was the mount longdon thing in the falklands and uh, and yeah I, i've i've read Many, many accounts of that and and again cuz i had instructors in junior para i mean my my platoon sergeant was was mentioned in dispatches on Mount Longdon, you know, um, you know, another guy, um, one of my other corporals, you know, he was on, it was so, you know, these, these, these people that are on there, they, they were training me to, to, to be a fighting soldier. So 
if you can imagine the intensity of that, it was, you know, it was based upon charging jagged mountains with bayonets fixed. And I remember mm-hmm. when I was doing bayonet practice in, eight, in 1988, and I was picked to be in the bayonet, bayonet practice team to perform in front of Gorbachev and Margaret Thatcher, right? But it got called off because of the Armenian earthquake. Um, so, yeah, mad, isn't it? You know, but I was, yeah, it, 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 and, and I still find it fascinating. And, and, and I, and, and we, the fact of, you know, you know, Robert Lawrence and Tumbledown, brilliant. I mean, I, I thought it was a great film, but nothing's ever been done about Mount Longdon. You know, mm. film-wise, I, mean, I think I heard something in the grapevine about N- Nigel Eli and, and the Goose Green um, um, story. Yeah, um, yeah, Nigel's been trying to get something going there, hasn't he? He's made some inroads. Yeah, but I'd, um, I'd love, to, I'd love to get to. Uh, to I mean, I, I tried to. I, I applied for a Shackleton fund. Um, I, unfortunately, I wasn't successful. Um, but I'd, I'd love to kind of get out there and, and my my. my what I wanted to do was photograph what was left from the war in 82. And, you know, obviously, you know, the bits of Pekaras and stuff that were in Pebble Island. And, and yeah, I mean, even Pebble Island, my, my CEO with Free Power was, was uh, he got a military cross on Pe- Pebble Island. So the Falklands War was a really big thing in my, in, 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 in me as a young soldier that, you know, I looked at that as, as was, that was the kind of zeitgeist of, of what soldiering was. And also I've, uh, you know, dealt with, with people that have, have, you know, caused a lot of, you know, um, stress and trauma and it is real, you know, I mean, I had a, you know, really good friend who, um, he was nine squadron out in the, in the Falklands and, uh, and was having to, you know, it was, it was all over the place, you know, you know, Goose Green and Mount Longdon and, you know, every, everywhere, you know, all that sort of stuff. And, um, you know, he, he went on hunger strike in, in um, 2018 outside combat stress at the um, orderly court thing. And he contacted me because I was working in journalism at the time. And uh, so I made sure I was with him and, and kind of lit the fuse with the journalists, if you like, and, and, and got that momentum going. But it was, you know, it, it's real. It's, um, you know, what was going down was, was, you know, I, yeah, it, it must have been quite immense. And there was, there was something else I heard somewhere about this, this big flash of light, as if like this extreme kind of evil of war, uh, you know, it, it just becomes, you know, like created this sort of cloud of total negativity with i mean you know there's stuff that you read about the bowl you know they were going to get got stuff the first bowl and the second bowl and the the fact that well you know it it just yeah it's um it's it's it, 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 it from what i visualize in my mind you know it just seems like hell on earth mm. you know so Stuart, what what year were you in you're in belfast weren't you well, I was I was posted to um, to Free Power, who were on a residential tour of uh, operating from Palace Barracks in 1989, hmm. and but I was still 17, so I was I was sent to the sergeant's mess first uh, to to be a barman, <laughs> and uh, again, you know, sergeants, you know, uh, they they would be talking about Mount Longdon till about four in the morning, you know, and. Uh, it was it was quite an eye opener to, to, mm. to just hear, you know, not the not the glory of it, but the actual, the real, you know, nuts and bolts and gritty and and you know, the actual horrors of war basically. Um, and I, I did that, and then I then joined um, um, B Company um, when I turned eighteen. And uh, and joined four platoon, which was nicknamed the uh, the Gypsy platoon. I said, "Why is it called the Gypsy platoon?" So we're all we're all come from broken homes and chippos and stuff. I thought, "Oh, I've got a bit of Gypsy blood in me somewhere, so uh, that's is okay." But um, no, it was uh, in fact to be honest, um, I remember joining B Company, um, and Ron Duffy was still um, was still serving. Now Ron Duffy, he was a Falklands War. Uh, 
uh, veteran. He was the kind of the 22 year Tom because getting promotion um, wasn't always easy. Um, and the Toms, if you like, had, they were real kind of strong vo- uh, force, a force, yeah, force of nature, you know, whatever. And when I was doing my PhD research many years later, and I, the earliest photographs I got was from 1974 by a, a guy who served in Free Para, and they were of a, a parachute display in the Ardoin. And in that set of pictures is Ron Duffy. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow. Um, but he was a legend. Um, and, you know, Jimmy would, 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 would uh, ver- verify that. He's mentioned a lot in the, in the, in the narratives of, and the books and the, uh, of, of, of that battle, um, you know. Um, but, yeah, it was it, fa- fascinating guys. And I always, always had time, even the two parallels, um, you know, guy who, who, who survived – uh, Warren Point, and he was out in Goose Green, and you know, I mean, I, I still keep in touch to this day. You know, it, it, it's I've always got time for the, for the Falklands uh, guys because um, mm. it, it's just something that I was just deeply fascinated as a as a ten year old when it when it all when it all happened, and I was and it was quite weird because um, I remember my mother saying saying well. Them, them young Argentinian conscripts haven't got a chance against those paratroopers. And I'm thinking, and as I look back at them words, what she said, and I always remember them, I think, what did you know of the parachute regiment, uh, uh, you know, prior to the Falklands, you know? Because family, and I don't mind my mother, she, she wouldn't really sort of talk much about um feelings or or, or or stuff and you know you know may, maybe that kind of um you know the, the northern ireland model and, and what they read in the newspapers uh might have you know informed her to make that kind of description because obviously they had a reputation but again I, I didn't know any of that the only reputation i knew was from watching the television series and uh the you know and and and, and the newspapers, you know, it was, I was, oh, you know, yeah, I was naive. I was a kid, you know, I was 10 years old, but, um, you know, uh, it was something I wanted to do and, uh, and I'm glad I did it because I, I wanted to, I didn't want to stick around Warrington Newtown and just end up, you know, I don't know what, what I'd end up, you know, but, uh, it just seemed all pretty dead end to me. Um, uh, you know, I wanted to make some of my life, you know, be part of something. And, um, and I think, um, you know, I had no qualifications when I joined up, um, because to me, they just didn't make, it, there was no need because this is what I was going to do and I was going to do it. And, um, but yeah, you know, and then reality comes back years later when you do a PhD stuff and then, you know, you want to be a, f- a lecturer at a university and say, well, have you got a teaching degree? And then you to get a teaching degree, you know, to even press go, you need to have your um, GCSE maths and English. <laughs> you know, so whatever. You know yes, what I, mean? yes. I don't want to be a teacher anyway. I'm, you know, I'll just carry on being me. So you, you were like me. You carried a camera with you. I had a camera tucked into me combat or my parasmock pocket. And um, every time I went past a mur- one of those murals, I'm <laughs> out with a camera. I've got to, got to get a photo. Of it. So I've got yeah. quite quite a few photos of my time there. And I, I'd imagine there's probably a lot of the guys that haven't haven't even got one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's because um, yeah, my, my stepfather was was um, a really keen amateur, and you know he was he'd done national service uh, with the Remi, and he was kind of like, "Well, you know, if you're going to join up, why don't you go and get a trade?" You know, and um, but I, I I didn't want to do that, and anyway, I didn't have the kind of you know I didn't quite get the marks needed to to. Um, to, to, you know, to join like the engineers or the Remy and stuff. I, but I didn't want to do that anyway. Um, but um, on my 18th birthday, he bought me an Olympus trip camera. And it, I, I actually found it when I was on, uh, you know, unwrapping it and stuff, because I was at Palace Barracks. I thought, oh, is it, you know, now I'm 18. I'm, I'm kind of old enough to vote. I'm old enough to drink alcohol. I'm old enough to actually have my own camera. <laughs> there was a roll of black and white film in it as well, which I thought was interesting because it was like, well, has he got a black and white roller film because it makes things look more wary, you know, uh, in black and white. Uh, but 
again, you know, uh, and as I know from my research on on soldiers, uh, you know, personal photography, the, the, the pictures, a lot of pictures in Northern Ireland are taken on top cover, aren't they? Because mm. It, you're you you're away from the prying eyes of the uh, the of the platoon sergeant and or the platoon commander, and uh, I remember if if you've been in Belfast, Chris, you would have would you've gone to the Twinbrooks around there. There was a, there's a, there's, a, there's a, like a, it was a, it's not even a great mural, but it's, it's it was a Bobby Sands mural and Juniper Juniper Way, and there was and it was like I think this this some kind of IRA um, uh, you know sort of a roll of honor or whatever in a coffin but they, everyone always should take pictures of that and i took a picture of that and, it, and it's got my rifle in the foreground and you can see the, the fact that i'm in a vehicle and i thought oh that's really great i've captured everything in there and even the snow on the ground you know and then you know you see many other people have taken the same kind of photograph it, it's it's quite interesting interesting mm -hmm. that but yeah i i kind of did photography really, um, and 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 years later they, they got, you know, they became interested as I, as I started to get work, my work seen as a, as a, uh, a photographer, because it it was a world that was not really seen by you know the the, the British photography kind of uh, community, if you like, and uh, so they were they were seen as quite unique. But to me, they weren't because, like you say, you took loads of photographs yourself. So the, these 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 photographs, there's 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 many many of them, you know. It, but it's what you do with them, isn't it? And mm -hmm. um, I, I was fortunate to, uh, you know, uh, I, I had a solo exhibition of my pictures of of. of uh, soldiers that had got seriously injured in Iraq and Afghanistan. And we had this kind of big exhibition space to fill. And I was showing the curator my kind of early stuff. And she said, oh, well, let's do an exhibition of that. And then I applied for this National Media Museum uh, grant. And I was awarded that because they saw the pictures on the wall. So it all kind of worked hand in hand. And um, and that's where my first book, The Myth of the Airborne Warrior, came about. Although the title... Uh, wasn't something I chose. That that was down to the editor, you know. And, and why, it was, why did they choose that? Well, they they chose that because um, again, because I was a, a bit naive. Uh, I didn't really know about book publishing, and for me, it was it was a case of meeting halfway with these people. You know, it was a case of no, it's a good idea. I know it's a good idea because I've been working in book. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So if we start to kind of protest, the uncertainty of all these things meant it, it might be delayed. It might be curtailed. Do you know what I mean? And um, so I kind of went along with it. Uh, I mean, even all the, the deduction of, of words and the black lines, I just thought, well, so I remember sending a copy to the, uh, the, 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 the illustrator, Ralph Steadman, because uh, I photographed him in, in 2010. I gave a copy of the book and he said, great book, great pictures, but why are these black lines over the words? Because, I mean, when we sent Bluey's home, they weren't, you know, looked at and black lined and all that stuff. Do you know what I mean? It, so yeah. I guess they thought it was arty. And, uh, I mean, PhotoWorks, who published the book, um, I heard nothing from them. Um, you know, I saw an annual in in in, in, in a... This, this gallery bookshop and it was like reduced to about you know half price and it was all the, I think it was in 2015 or 2014 and I thought you know they're doing all these things and, and I never I've never been really called up for to have any word or anything it's like they've just put me in that pigeonhole as the ex-paratrooper who, 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 who you know took photographs when he was a soldier and then if you like that kind of um eclipse my later work so all of a sudden it's like oh you know these these poorly made photographs taken on a ca compact camera aren't they unique you know and uh and but you know yeah it was great to have a book and then and then obviously the second book i did pig's disco um which caused a bit of a fracas really especially with people i serve with um and you know it, you, you think it's great and everything but it does impact you, you know, especially what, with what was the what was the um, controversy? Uh, well, because we have these things like uh, you know social media and Facebook, it was 
people went on the old attack. You know, it was like I disgraced the regiment. You know, I tarnished the the the, the, the you know the free Paris reputation and and, and all these things you know and, and it, it did get quite nasty and um and it but it was all you know done you know f through through uh messaging or posting or this that and uh and you know after after a while you know i mean it just went on for about two years you know solid uh you know it starts to kind of impact you after what, what a bit. was it what was it that was triggering people <laughs> Um, I think it was because it was the mention of, of, of drugs and stuff. Because, uh, I mean, the context behind that, I mean, I I'd, um, I was working for an organisation called Vice Media or Vice Magazine back back in the day where um, it was it was a magazine. And they were the kind of, to inform people um, sort of under 21-year-olds about the mad world we live in. And I did a lot of work on gangs in Liverpool and... Uh, I did, uh, you know, the injured uh, veterans, which was an article shredded by war, and, uh, and 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 the guy who was the editor was from Stockport. So again, the, the Northerners sort of seem to look after themselves in 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a way where they we helped each other, um, especially when we're in London, because it, it's it's a tough tough place to 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 to, to be to work, you know, to just you know find your place you know and uh, so anyway i started to work with them and um I again i've shown i always had this portfolio of, of of my snapshots that i always kept said well this is my early work anyway yeah uh, one of the guys working there was working in the art department and and then he branched to make his own publishing company and after the myth of the airborne warrior came out and i i, I mentioned um, that i wasn't entirely happy by that um he said well i'd still like to do a book with you but um I need about 20,000 words because I want to do it as, as photos and words. I said, well, it just so happens I've wrote this radio play because uh, I, I, I was waiting with, to go to, I was waiting to go to Somalia with, with Vice and then that had changed and then I was going to go to Nigeria. And I had about sort of, about, about 500 pounds worth of inoculations in my arm from this Harley Street clinic, you know, to go into the, to these, these volatile areas. And I got sent nowhere. So I wrote this radio play called Pig's Disco. Um, and it was a kind of sort of on the, on the, on the kind of, and it started really when, when, um, cause, cause after we had 1990, which was a really full on year, a lot of stuff happened. And, and then we were on Christmas, uh, rear party guard duty at palace. You know, a company had just, been embroiled in this very controversial joyrider shooting mm. and we were there you know and uh and of course anyway one of the senior guys from from the platoon was going um you know we had a couple of big so you ever tried any acid i'm like ah oh, well i'm a bit sort of not in for that so there's a little bit of peer pressure a little bit of intrigue and of course this whole thing of we're para reg fuck it if you know what i mean ready for anything <laughs> so so down the old the gregory it goes and uh pint of beer and uh and then all of a sudden we just sort of sat there and uh, count, you know, this one of the guys had gone, oh, this is shit, you know, this is shit. Well, let's drink all our money. And I pulled out all my uh, change from my pockets. And I remember looking at this section commander from, from the platoon and they saw his nose growing and stuff. And, and that's where it all kind of started to begin. And these were, I mean, it's the first time I'd ever done any of that kind of uh, thing in my life. Uh, I was very anti-drugs. Um, Especially, you know, I, I was brought up the Grain Jill just say no kind of mm -hmm. campaign. You know, um, you know, we don't want to end up like Zamo, you know, smacked out of his head in the in in in, in the in the you know school boys' toilets. You know, um, so we had this, and it was something I'd never really experienced in my life. You know, it was like you know, um, and that's what Pig's Disco. It began with that. You know, this this thing, and then obviously they'd say you know never do drugs because it leads on to other things no no it doesn't doesn't well it kind of does in a way and um so i was quite intrigued by that and, and then obviously it was the early 90s and, and some of the lads would come back to manchester we'd go to the hacienda and stuff and then you know it was ecstasy and everything else and uh, and then there was a little bit of a cult going on in free power like the free power ravers you know and uh, it, and, the, and the, the motto in free power for me, as I remember, the, the, all the parachute. In fact, I learned it in, in junior parachute company from the uh, sergeant major. It says the crime is getting caught. 
you know, do what thy wilt, like some Alistair Crowley thing. But the crime is getting caught. So, you know, we weren't blatantly obvious. I remember sort of sat in the naffy coming down from, the, we were waiting in the cookhouse about six o'clock in the morning, looking like vagabonds, you know, around, like waiting for the soup kitchen to arrive. Still with eyes like saucepan. Got to the hot plate and then I'm thinking I've slopped spaghetti and I'm thinking, why have we got spaghetti for breakfast? And it's all moving on the plate. And I thought, God, the only thing we we've got to wait for the naffy to open. Do you know what I mean? I mean, years later, in fact, when I actually got out of of uh, of, 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 of yeah, towards the end of my uh, parachute regiment uh, career, when I decided that I was going to leave, you know. Uh, and, and there was like a rave club in Aldershot where all these ravers would come. So, and that was another factor because it was like all the all the fit birds would go there, you know. And you'd be like, oh, "Wow, this is brilliant!" And this this one one of these birds gave me this book. She said, "You know, with a mind like yours, I think you should read this." And it was Hunter Thompson's Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. And of course, when I read that, I thought, "Jesus, that's that's exactly what <laughs> happened." Apart from the fact it's not in Las Vegas and it's not in the uh, the the Mink Club or whatever or whatever hotel. But what happened in that Christmas disco was, was yeah, and, and that, and so it was always something that I wanted to write about, but it was fine in the right way. And uh, if anything, I wanted to say, well, yeah, that was, that was really how we dealt with trauma. That was how we uh, alleviated, the, 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 you know, what was going on in Northern Ireland, you know, the, the intensity and the hostility and all these things. And, you know, we are just as normal as, as everyone else. And we went out to, uh, went raving as well. You know, it was, it was mad because you'd, like you say, you'd, well, not like you say, but what I've heard through, through narratives with this, this whole sense of, you know, even football hooligans were feeling the love, you know. Mm -hmm. it was, uh, it, I mean, it was, it was mad. I mean, going into the limelight and there was, it was like, you'd see a few of this sort of the, the, the full screws and stuff with their NBC gloves. You know what I mean? You're thinking, well, what's going on? This is this is just mayhem, but and and you know the music. You know, it, although I wasn't really into that, it just kind of took you away. And again, it was great fitness as well. You know, it was you know you were like giving it the old thing. But yeah, it was funny. Yeah, Ron Hill's Ron Hill gloves and uh, <laughs> you know, you, you, the liners in the NBC thing. Yeah, it was, it was funny. But uh, yeah, so that's that. So when that book came out and and the hostility it created, it was. Yeah, I mean, I, I just thought, oh, yeah, whatever, yeah, cheers, what, you know, the old usual thing. But it does get to you. And uh, how I managed to alleviate that, I mean, if it, if it wasn't for the books, I wasn't being offered the, the PhD scholarship. So, but I explained this when I went to the, to the unveiling of the Airborne statue in 2019. And the only reason why I went there was because my friend Gus Hales, who went on hunger strike uh, outside. He was a good, good friend of me. And I, I'd met him originally from, from Veterans for Peace. And uh, and it was, yeah, we, we got on because it was the Airborne Brotherhood. But uh, he said, oh, I'm going to Aldershot for the statue unveiling. I said, well, do you know what? I, I don't really want to go to Aldershot because it's like, you know, after all the shit I've had. He says, no, it would be good. I said, you know what? If you're going, I'm going. And I did. And of course, I went got the train for Waterloo. As soon as I got off the train at Aldershot, all I could hear was, oi, Griff! You know, and it was guys I knew from a platoon. And then, you know, there was a bit of a moment when people were like thinking, what, what is he doing here? And, you know, and it felt a little bit like, you know, Moses when the sea parts were the ones that were for you and the ones that were against. But it was like facing the, the sort of, the evil or, or, or the demons, facing them in real time person, you know, in real time. And it was really cathartic because it's like, they weren't going to give me any crap. Do you know what I mean? It was like, you know, I, I was, you know, Jesus Christ, you, it, it, it makes me laugh, those people that, it's like your job is you're a trained killer. You're like the toughest dudes on the planet. And you get these strange thinking people that think that you're choir boys. It's yeah. like, do you not know the job that we do? And you're having a go because mate, he wants to go and, dance all night and hug his mate <laughs> it's yeah it's it's because of all the stigmatizing oh you can't blame these old boys you know they they, they, they they've got it in their minds but um the the, the military is a cross-section of society so whatever goes on in society goes on in the military and anyone that thinks it doesn't is just deluded exactly and, and also like 
I can tell you some of the, in the Marines, the guys that got to the highest ranks, I'm talking, they joined as like recruits, um, the, one of the men and they, 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 they've got up to the high up officers ranks by getting a commission. They was all at it. <laughs> right. And one further, one chap who obviously will remain nameless went on to get one of the highest medals for bravery. He led a classic section attack. I, I'm not even going to say how many enemy his yeah. section took out, right? Just one section. And it was in the hundred. Well, it was over a hundred. Um, he was out Saturday night dancing his clogs off. You you won't want better guys around you, but it, it, it's just, it's just, just, a, it's just one of them things. I, I just, I get upset when it's a small minority that can get a guy like you upset when all the work you've done in your life, all the stuff you've done for peace, all the people you must have inspired, all the work you've done for my kid, and I've never even met you, so that hopefully we don't have this bullshit war, you know, controlled by the bankers for the next generation. And clearly looking at Ukraine, we we, we still bloody do have. Mm. And it's the same with my life. I mean, I've caned it in the past for good and for bad but here's the thing i live in paradise i've you meet my kid he's the greatest he's just a gift from freaking god man right so what does that tell me it tells me i've made all the right decisions in my life right and i i ain't changing them for some you know old old sweat that that hasn't got a life um and I know so many people listening now are going, they, they get it. And we, we don't, what other people think, that's their business. And if it's sad, then, then they're sad individual. Trying to put their rules on other people's lives is, it's just pants, man. And, um, you know, you was a para, I was a Royal Marines commando. We were the toughest that they were. We, we all knew how to do the job. And that's it, end of, <laughs> you know. End, end of no, nothing more to be said on that but yeah. it's um it, it it's all like the i blame zamo <laughs> yeah, Z- yeah just say and what, no what, and what they don't what what these individuals don't understand is while zamo is going to meet nancy reagan and her and her husband are, are pushing this just say no campaign right is cia is bringing in all the stuff from nicaragua <laughs> and, yeah, no. and and supporting a crack epidemic in um in the usa and then blaming it on the poor black community <laughs> I know, it's, it's phenomenal isn't it um, you know, so it, to read into these things and see it for what it really is and uh but yeah and, and how i you know going back to, to you know it's it's a moment in time isn't it you know and um uh, and yeah, and, and I guess, no, no, it's not a guess, but when I was there in Aldershot, to say, well, if it wasn't because of that and, and doing that, then, you know, I mean, I, my argument was, was say, you, there's not many ex-free paratoms that have, have got a doctorate, you know, and, um, you know, and, and I'm not just saying, you know, uh, you know, look at me, look at me, but, but yeah, just a bit of respect, that's all we're kind of looking for, just a bit of respect, and because uh, that's what I get, I give in return, and it's nice to just have that in return too, <laughs> you know. Stuart, can I be really rude, brother? But I've got a certain Scots Guard officer. Um, yeah, who, it's who, fine. Who, who the name Tumble Down might be familiar with people. He's just trying to. He's actually trying to enter the Zoom meeting because I'm going to chat to him in a bit, and I just yeah. want want to reassure him that it's you, it be with you. In, yeah, that's absolutely fine. Give my best to, to Robert. He's um, I he will do. Great do, guy. Just let me just whack this, whack this t- uh, text off. There we go. Yeah, certainly in his bloody story. My God, that tumble down was incredible. Was it a series or a, a, just a? It was one a up? film with Colin Firth. Yeah, it was just God. It was. It was. It was gr- a great. You know. Um, yeah, it's. Um, yeah, I, it'd, be, it'd be good if they actually put it back on the telly again because there needs to be more, you know. Um, I, 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 I remember watching it when it actually came out, you know, in real time. And um, 
it is incredibly moving. And also to get that kind of perspective. And uh, and then when I met Robert in, 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 in real life, you know, it, 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 was, be- it was better than Colin Firth, you know. Mm. <laughs> the, mo- the most realistic bit in that film wasn't the, the Falkland stuff, although it was incredible. It was a bit where they had to wake him up because he was out with a bird from the night before. Yeah, that's <laughs> and, it, yeah. yeah. And, he, and he nearly misses the bus. Yeah. And, and, and that's your troop officer. <laughs> yes. That's so good effort, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, so I was in Belfast and quite often I hear people go, oh, I was only in Bel- Belfast. And I'm like, what are you on about? Um, well, sorry, I should explain. Eight, 1989 was one of the worst years on records for the Troubles, right? I know it wasn't the sort of 70s that we see from Bloody Sunday, but it, yeah. it I mean, one day, one day we we had, a hun- I think it was 176 serious incidents. That was riots, buses being stolen and set alight, kidnappings, uh, yeah. knee, knee cappings, mortars going up, which they, that was quite regular, snipes, um, gunmen, um, you, you know, you, 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 um, they used to mort the police stations, didn't they? All this sort of stuff. Um, and I say to anyone, when a guy behind you gets shot three times, <laughs> right? like literally Jock is, he's tail end Charlie, he's five metres behind me, got shot three times. Um, and bless him, got up and kept fighting, <laughs> right? It's you, that's as close as to war as you want to come. <laughs> um, especially when the ground's flicking up by your feet next because the gunman's, uh, em- you know, em- determined to empty his magazine. Mm. So, so, um, it was a time, you know, it, it was serious, and we lost a chap, um. Yeah, um, Gilly, rest in peace. We we he he got shot dead after. Oh God, we'd only been there about three weeks, mm. and I remember it to this day. In fact, I had a ch- this ch- chat with an SBS um, friend of mine yesterday, and I said, "Do you remember how real it gets when they fall you in, and the, and and the OC comes and debriefs you and says, right, fellas, when you get out there tomorrow, I'm going to fucking smash it, right? Put this behind us, and it's like." fuck, I'm in the Royal Marines. I really am in, like, m- my mate, he's, da- he's, de- he's dead. This is, and we're just going to go back to work like nothing's happened. It's it's serious old stuff, mate, isn't it, you know? Oh, yeah. Serious yeah. old stuff. And, and, and on on both sides, I mean, I was 19 and they gave me a, a fully automatic rifle and I'm telling 40-year-old IRA men, like what they can and can't do, you know, Oi, you empty your pockets. Do, yeah. do, do you know what I mean? It, it was the thing, wasn't it? To give them as hard a time as possible. And some of them, if you caught them in a, if you caught them in an alleyway, they didn't come out of that alleyway very. Yeah. I'm not, and I'm not, I'm not saying I'm, I'm don't get me wrong. Friends at home. Well, I'm not proud of this behavior. It, it's just, it's conflict. It's well, it's like a switch in the head, isn't it? And and it and it and it you know and it, it gets activated and uh, it's you know and then yeah it's all the, the training and, and it all takes over, doesn't it? But um, yeah, it's it, it's. Mm. I think what, what what with Northern Ireland was the familiarity of it. Um, you know, it it was so like being back home. You know, it was so near. Um, the fact that you know I'm from the northwest, a lot of Irish people there. It was a co- quite confusing in terms of you know even going home on leave. You know, I mean, this has been before um, you know drugs, but the paranoia um, of just of being you know a target or targeted um, was just immense. And you know, and it and it. it it does. It takes its toll after 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 a, after a while, and um, yeah, and and like you say, you know, just you know, just turning one, you know, down one road or whatever, and then bump, it it just kicks off, or, you know, you, and you're caught in just this, this this massive vacuum intensity, and 
you know, yeah, I mean, I, I, I have trouble trying to sort of, you know, think coherently of, of, of what happened. You know, it's like it sort of spins me out even to this day. Do you know what I mean? With, with, and yeah, it, 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 it was, it was, it was very real. Um, what, well, yeah, and, and this, what was it where I heard, um, from, it was like, oh, it was a very good live tri- training area, you know, uh, yeah. And, you know, it, yeah. And it went on for so long as well. Mm-hmm. And the public opinion. And I know when I was at school and the, 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 my, the friends that went to art school and I didn't go to art school, they didn't want to talk to me uh, when they knew I was in the parachute regiment uh, in Northern Ireland because they'd all been, you know, give, they're all part of the troops out kind of thing that was... You know, so yeah, it, it was it was it was a strange, strange time, a strange time, and um, you know I've done I've been back to, to Belfast and I've I've done some you know the, the peace and reconciliation uh, things and uh, I mean you know we, I worked with, with Vice and we did a, a God Save Belfast a documentary and uh, Stuart, what would it be like if I was to go there tomorrow? Could I walk through the Ardoin on my own? To be I don't know if you could walk. What be, but what, but I mean you, by on my own you, is without a weapon, obviously. Oh yeah, yeah, you could. Yeah, you could. I mean, I, I mean, I, 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 there's people who I, if I was to go and make these journeys, I'd say, look, you know, I'd make contact with such and such and say, can we go? And you know, because it's still very twitchy curtain. Everyone, it's a very closed and very. Um, you know, it's a commu- very intense community, even to this day. Uh, when I was in the Ardoin in 2011, and um, this was with Vice, and, I mean, they had the water cannons and everything. And I was with all the uh, the, the nationalists from, from that side, and there was the police in front. And it was just, it was, you know, I mean, these people know how to riot, you know, mm. and there was rubber bullets going off, CS pellets and everything. And, so of course, when, when I came back to the UK... And, and I was then going to go off to Siberia to do a story on, on moonshine drug addiction. And um, someone saw sort of called me up and said, could you go to Tottenham for the riots? I said, well, I've had my share of writing in the Ard. I've been in the Ardoin, um, you know, uh, covering that. And these, you know, they really know how to riot. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, no, I mean, even because when I was at university there, um, there's some people that would say, you know, just be careful, you know, and that usually came from kind of, loyalist leaning kind of unionist kind of leaning kind of people. can i ju- just explain for our friends at home in case they're wondering what 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 i mean is is back in the day folks um every, every when you when you serve in northern ireland if if you're in a, a, a hardened republican area like our doing like west belfast north belfast um you, you've always got a weapon on you and you're with a team and that team is with, uh, you know, situated in what's called a multiple and you wouldn't go anywhere without all these armed people. I mean, you're, you're on patrol, just like a military patrol. The, the, if, if I was to walk out the barracks in my civvies and try and do, replicate that journey, I'd be disappeared off the street in as soon as someone clicked, I was a serviceman. Oh yeah, a car would right. car would pull up, bundle you inside, and you, you you'd either you you'd either never be seen again, or you turn up um, full of holes on the side of a road somewhere. Yeah, and especially if you like para reg, they'd take great glee in, in torturing you to death and just you know stringing up your body parts on some tree somewhere because it's it's a thing. I mean, I, I, when I've spoke, I mean they have the IR real provisionals. It, they had a lot more respect for the Royal Marines than they did Power Edge. They, yeah, it was. Um, but yeah, it, it would. It, 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 they'd happily butcher you to death. Um, and so yeah, yeah. It, it, and even when I was um, like doing my PhD, and um, we went into some bar, which um, you know, uh, it was in the city centre. But uh, the guy who knew, apparently knew the you know shop one of our three para lads in the head. Um, it's mentioned in the Martin McGartland, uh, 50 dead man walking book. Uh, he was a black guy, um, Tony Harrison. And, and then there was the other guy who came in was the brother of the, uh, the, the, the teenage 
girl who survived the joyride. And I thought, whoa, this is getting a bit close. This is sort of getting quite near the wire. Um, mm. You know, but, you know, disregard my own history. Um, Belfast is a, is a great city, very compact, brilliant, but it's there's still, you know, people know it, it, each other and this that and um you know you can't you, you can't you can't stop the memories really and um i think this is the problem years later is is not handling the way you can suffer from them memories themselves you know as, as as freud said in 18 such and such you know this man is not suffering from trauma he's suffering from memories um and this is the thing you know and um what well, yeah were, Stuart, uh, what do you have any particularly, you know, bad memories from over there or was it the whole experience in itself? Uh, yeah, there was particular f- flashpoints. Um, you know, I remember um, being in Broad in a, in a, you know, we were on QRF and then a can of beer was thrown and, uh, and then all of a sudden we're like sort of in some kind of ambush. You know, I mean, I'm on about hundreds pouring out of this club mm. and there was just four of us. You know, and the rocks are coming down. I mean, these these aren't these aren't bricks. These are literally like bloody cobblestones coming down. And you know, one guy gives a fight and this that, and then we ordered to to, to to open fire and 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 just the mayhem of that. You know, and I, and this is this is my first this is my first tour. You know, first sort of intense. You know, they had the other four week kind of block things. Uh, you know, and and then you know other incidents where you know yeah well, look. A, a call signs getting, you know, the basically a gang sort of overwhelm them, and you're there, and you're like, you know, and it, it's just literal gutter fighting, you know, and then, and then when the joyrider thing happened, um, you know, out on the ground, you know, just taking every bit of abuse known to known to man, and you're thinking, well, wait a minute, the situation I had with that that beer can was far more volatile, but I didn't open up. I mean, I remember having two section commanders screaming in my ears going ready aim ready aim you know what i mean and i was waiting for this word fire and it, and, and i have to admit part of me was just please say fire because i wanted to open up and f- you know and just let rip because the anger and frustration and the, and the you know you've been spat on you know just it, it, it's 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 horrendous you know mm. and it's full on and and it's terrifying. It's terrifying. You might be armed and stuff, but you've got all these things that, well, you know, I can't, you know, I have to wait for the order. I have to wait for the order. And uh, and the, the order never came, you know. And then I got a big cobblestone whack me in my, in my uh, them bloody helmets with the visors, you, which you wear on top cover. And you're like, you know, and yeah, that's a particular thing that kind of regurgitates itself. Um Crowd, you know the, the crowds of it all, you know, and, and just the kind of the, the heat of, of, of uh, and the and the anger and, and and just the sort of yeah, the, the, like I say, the, the, the suffocating feeling of the of of, of the extreme hatred, mm. uh, and then and then and then yeah, the the, the joyrider thing, and you're thinking, fucking hell, you know, you, you didn't have to do that, but it happened, and you know there was I wasn't there actually on the ground. Um, I, I know there was one of my friends who uh, who I was in junior para with. He was actually in that section, and you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's just it's just how things get out of hand very, 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 very quickly, and just how volatile it is. And like you say, it's or not like you know, like I say um, is you know you've got this intense violence, and then the next day, no one says anything. It's just like back to normal. I remember after that incident with the with the beer can, of of having to go back the next day to the same area, and I, I couldn't even walk properly. You know, I was, and I and I, and I can rem- I remember bits of it because I wrote a letter to a friend, and that friend gave me that letter back, and I was just like, you know, I was quite it was quite emotional to read read the words of an eighteen year old, you know, teenager. You know what was going on, and at the end he says, uh, "You know, I, I have to go back, back into Twinbrook with my swollen knee, but it's okay because I'm a paratrooper." Ha ha! Do you know what I mean? Mm. It's like switch on, switch off. You know, and 
just crack on. Just try and get home in one piece. You know, try and get home on leave and, you know, and just, uh, you know, if no one, no one's, no one's dead, then that's, that's the main thing, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Stuart, listen, it's been absolutely wonderful chatting to you, brother. Um, I w wish we could chat longer, but as, uh, yeah, I understand. Ro it's Ro been a pleasure, Chris. Thanks yeah, again. Ro Ro Robert's on in a moment. And because we started a bit late, I, I don't, um yeah. been a while trying to organize it with him but yeah but i listen i feel like we're only halfway through our chat so let's let's do a part two Brilliant. um because i'd like to hear about your um work with veterans for peace we've had spike on the podcast yeah i know spike um, yeah yeah Good that luck. was a, that was a great it, it's an a i tell you what it's mad out that triggers people you, you you know just mentioning veterans for peace that Oh, you, you start getting f fucking death threats from veterans. It's like what? Um, Did you? Yeah, I read. I read Joe Joe Glenton's Veteranhood book. Um, it was it was okay. Um, uh, and, but yeah, I mean, I, I've not really been that too involved with with veterans for, um, for peace. To be honest, I've just cracked on with my PhD, and um, I don't. I know, I know what you're saying, but. I don't want to kind of alienate. Although I had, like I say, what I've mentioned about the the, um, you know, a lot of an animosity and stuff. I, I I'm, I'm I'm a forgiving person, and uh, and yeah, some people don't quite get it, get that. And um, but I remember giving a presentation at uh, one of the AGMs, and uh, I just thought <laughs> we're going to do this again. I just had the the wrath of of, of female veterans give me some. You know, again, with social media, you know, they think they can sort of, you know, get on the attack and it just gets really kind of tedious. Um, but um, no, I wish them all well, you know, in, in all in all areas. Um, I mean, it's a bit like when, when the, the Gus Hales is on, on the hunger strike. All of a sudden, you had these kind of, you know, you know, Jim Davidson turn up, Tommy Robertson turn up from the English Defence League. And I'm thinking, oh, yeah, he's had so many hits and... I don't know. Uh, some of these things don't sit quite right, and then these, these certain what is it? The certain groups sort of start to take over these veteran, and and um, and it be quite, it can become quite toxic, really. And um, but um, I think if 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 anyone knows about um, peace, it's probably people that have served in 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 frontline situations because they know the the, the madness of war and conflict. The uh, uh, you know what it does, and um, and there has to be some way of, of 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 learning from that. But like you say, with Ukraine going on, it's it's yeah, it's. Um, I think the thing for me, really, what what really caused me serious moral injury was was the shoddy withdrawal from Afghanistan. Um, I just you know when people go, oh, stiff up a lip, oh job job well done. No, it wasn't quite like Job that. well done, making way for the Chinese to come in and do... That's all that was about. Smash the place up, make a bad name for ourselves, let the Chinese come in, shake hands, exploit the lithium mines. Um, probably, yeah. some, probably some, if you're familiar with the Belt and Road Initiative, this super, it's kind of super highway from China to Europe that's that's being built as we speak it it, it it's it, it's never about it's well oh, there's always more to it in these geopolitical yes it is and it and, and and we've just got to wise people don't get involved don't take sides peace come first peace love kindness empathy you know create the world you want for your children for crying out loud and you're not going to do it by believing what you see on the bloody mainstream news because <laughs> it's all owned by the people that that um well own everything but like i say a chat for another day another day Stuart. yeah massive yeah. thank you mate Brilliant. um can you just stay on the line shot and I'll, I'll thank you quick um properly afterwards but to our friends at home i hope you've enjoyed that um as as much as i have bit of a trip down the mem memory lane although i never had a Never had a camera that good. I do remember that camera. It was really, really smart. Um, but uh, if you could like and subscribe, friends, that would be really kind. Much love to you all, and we'll see you soon. Take care. Thanks, Chris. Welcome, mate.